Hi, I am Sega Sanes Kefalidis and this is your monthly development update for XFC. Uh, this video is about XFC for Terminal and specifically about release 0.9.2 which I released yesterday. Uh, do note that this is a development update and a release candidate at that, so it would be great if you could download it and test it and report any issues that you find. If nothing comes up, if nothing comes up, I'm planning to release the 1.0 version in a couple of weeks and then you will be able to use it whenever the maintainers of your distro uh, include that. Uh, so let's see what we've got. Yeah, uh, let's start on the dependencies, uh, which probably most of you don't care about that. <laughs> the dependencies have been updated. Uh, it now requires uh, the XFC libs of 4.16 or later. And that shouldn't be a problem for anyone. And the minimum VT version now is 0.51.3. Uh, I did that because XFC for Terminal had a lot of flags for older versions of VT, something like 0.49 or older. So I just removed a bunch of duplicated code. And this is like really old, it's like three or four years old. And I don't really think that there is any distro that uses that while using the latest XFC for terminal. Uh, next, uh, we have general improvements. Uh, I can't show you this one because I am not in my VM right now. Uh, essentially what this does, the using XFC title dialog for find, is that it now supports the setting, the settings editor called GTK slash uh, you, uh, dialog use headers or something like that, which enables and disables header bars. Previously, uh, the header bar was manually created and there was no way to not use it. <laughs> so that has been fixed. Uh, the only window, the only dialog that still has a problem is the preferences dialog, as far as I know. And Gael brought this to my attention, so thank you, Gael. And that will not change for this release. It will change for version 1.2, which is the release after this one. And uh, it will happen then because I am planning to rewrite the preferences dialog from scratch. So it will have to wait. Uh, the R uh, card, what should I call that? It's not like the new line. I, I don't, I remember carriage return, that's probably it, uh, now is used to check for unsafe pasting. Uh, it's about paste jacking. I've talked about that in a previous video. And that was emerge requests, and thank you, I don't remember the name of the person who created that. <laughs> uh, the tab accelerators can now be updated at runtime, and this I will show you. So let's go to the shortcut editor, and it doesn't only work with the shortcut editor, it also works uh, when you change the um, axels.scm file. But since I have the shortcuts editor right here, let's find uh, something that makes sense, like the previous tab, and control shift tab, and control tab, and now, uh, create a new one. If I press control tab, it works. Previously, you would need to close and restart XFC for terminal. So that's a small improvement right there. Uh, now, uh, accelerator uh, key events are consumed when accelerators are activated. Um, this was something that was essentially <laughs> it should have been introduced uh, when the transition from GTK action entries to XFC GTK action entries happened, so in version 0.9.0, .0, but it finally happened now. And this makes the code a little bit cleaner and fixes a couple of bugs. Uh, next, about the shortcut editor, and uh, specifically about the shortcut editor. And do mind that this is part of the core XFC lib libraries. So, because it will also be used by Thuner and maybe other XFC applications, I don't know. But uh, it will be used by Thuner for sure. And uh, so this will not be there if you don't have, for most people, uh, until XFC 4.18 releases, because it requires libxfc for UI 4.17, which will be released as 4.18. Uh, yeah, so most people won't have that unless you build the development li uh, libraries. And uh, what's the improvement? Oh, yes. 
And now you can uh, change the handling of the go to tab accelerators. Uh, I am. Uh, I change the code of the go to tab accelerators so you can change them through the editor. So like that, we previously couldn't do that. And this also makes the code not like, it isn't like really a lot cleaner because it's still kind of messy, but it's a start. <laughs> it's the first step. And now also the shortcut editor is supposed to be centered on this window, but it's not really because I don't have the I haven't messed with the flags and the thing is that this requires libxfc for UI 4.17.5 which has not been released yet so until that gets released I will not be able to showcase it I would need to go and remove a guard and then re-enable it but yeah the, it works so instead of placing the socket setter in the center or on the bottom right or whatever it should be placed like the preferences dialog, which is on top of the window. Uh, next, uh, the regressions fixed. So let's see. Oh, <laughs> the menu bar one. Uh, oops, uh, the menu bar one is pretty interesting. Uh, the menu bar changes size when the window is maximized, and this is something that I never noticed. Like you see, when I bleh, ZS8 is dying right now. Uh, you see, the menu bar keeps the same size. That didn't actually happen. Uh, when you maximize the window, the menu bar became a little bit bigger, if I remember correctly, and Guile again noticed that, and I don't know how he did, but he did, <laughs> and so that's fixed uh, thanks to him. Um, the context menu now has uh, the exact same options with the addition of the send signal uh, menu uh, that it used to have, uh, because it had some other things like uh, the entire view menu, the read-only was missing the read-only entry. So this has been reverted to how it was before 0 0.9. Um, the show windows border, window borders entry in the view menu was missing and I hadn't noticed that, but now I reintroduced it. Uh, revert the view menu or, ah, yes. Um, the zoom entries were above these entries and this was again a needless change and I also had noticed that but now I fixed it and it is consistent with other XFC applications like Thunor. And finally, not really finally but almost at last, <laughs> almost finally, uh, if you use 0 0.9.1 which introduced the overlay scroll bar, which you can also not use, like go here and say, I don't want that. And it works right now, but it would be better if you restarted. Um, the thing was that the way I implemented it could break some themes. And so now that's gone. That's fixed. So if your theme was a bit like funky, on the right side right here or whatever you have the scroll bar you can put on the left too if it was a bit funky now that's fixed and there were also some small improvements like uh, fixing some build warnings uh, replacing the g time valve with a g in 64 which uh, is a y2038 problem and the app the copyright was updated <laughs> but whatever and a lot of translation updates have been released too right here and that's it um, I encourage you to test this release because as I, as I said this is a release candidate and I want to release the final version in a couple of weeks and if you test it and report either problems or to say everything works fine or under the video or send me an email email or message me on IRC or telegram or whatever that could be great because I'm gonna be like yeah I can release it and be sure about it being bug free uh, because a lot of things have changed in the like how, how long like past year yeah year and three months was the last release yeah something like that year and yeah year and three months in the past 15 months a lot has changed <laughs> in xfc for kernel so there is that until next time um, have a nice day if you enjoyed the video you can leave a comment uh, ask questions, press the like button, whatever you want to do. Uh, bye bye!